I'm here. Hello. How are you? Happy Monday. Happy whatever time it is for you. Welcome once again to the Logan's Run Project. We are now at episode seven, if you can believe it, or perhaps not. We did some, we finished up, I should say, roughing out our terrain last week. Hey, no, nothing. I don't think I have any programming notes. Oh, I guess I do have one thing I shall mention, and I'll throw a link here into the chat. I have a voicemail now. Through the power of Anchor. I've got a, uh, I've got a voicemail box. Let me just make a quick message here. That's not what I wanted. Uh, of course, it's going to do something goofy. Hold on a second. There we go. There you can see a short, short URL. Joel Anderson. Hey, the luckiest of all episodes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Lucky number seven. Wasn't there a movie, Lucky Number Seven, or something that was kind of bad but i don't want i don't want to think about that all right next thing i need so that's the only thing you can leave me a voicemail now i'm not sure how it's gonna go it's kind of an experiment of sorts to see if it's a feature that people even want or feel like they might uh, have use for check it out try it out if not no big no biggies i'm trying to find where's my miro board here's my miro board and i will get that up all that wonderful st stuff. You know, let me move. Let's get my windows configured a little bit better. All right. So if let me get Miro up and running. There we go. This is where we left off. I'm sorry if you're listening to this later in audio form. I, the roughed out, the roughed out kind of local map of the environs with essentially three different uh, quote unquote nations, not including the domes, which really have essentially two competing nations inside. One, the original domes culture, and then two, the newer, what we would call it, the sanctuary culture that are competing inside the domes. And then we uh, kind of roughed out couple extra, couple outsider, outsider, survivor, whatever we want to call it, nations. Following the worlds without number, pretty much just going down their, I don't want to call it checklist, but essentially they're creating your campaign section. We're now, for those who might be playing at home, uh, on page 124, looking at nation construction. They have some talk about borders, which we have already roughed in. I will, you know, these are very rough. <clears throat> I'll probably fix the rivers too. I, you know, just in heck, in terms of hex maps, I kind of like where the rivers run the borders of the hexes. And somebody hit me up. I forget who it was last week that I can essentially use a uh, a setting in Worldographer to uh, snap to the grid, so I can have things like rivers follow the hex borders which also means that I can have uh, the nation borders follow the hex borders, which will make some of this a little bit easier to follow. Now, nothing says, uh, have we decided yet if this is a straight fantasy or some kind of post sci-fi fantasy has yet to be decided. I'm open to your thoughts. Maybe I'll put a poll somewhere <clears throat> still leaving it open. Whether we're going kind of Thundar sci fantasy or straight Fantasy. I'm open to either one. Maybe side fantasy. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I really have no, I don't think I have any real uh, uh, leaning one way, one way or, or, or another. I definitely want it to be fantasy in some way. So it would definitely be kind of in a, in, in like I said, that side fantasy or fantasy. Um, but either one of those, I think for me works. 
So let me know what you guys think. No one's complained about my audio levels or anything like that, so I assume I'm all good on that score. So we got some borders. They mention generally following rivers, right? You want to follow the natural borders, unless there's some reason to otherwise. And you will see that in various places in Africa, for example. You will see that work uh, for for nefarious reasons. Uh, colonizers would create would would purposefully create borders that didn't follow any kind of natural boundaries, and really just to kind of create conflict there and you also see it in places where there aren't very many borders like in the central bits of the u.s you'll see very straight lines because there essentially is nothing there and there is no uh natural border okay so we have population so after borders which we've kind of already did we got population For a general baseline population for relatively low-tech, low-magic land of unremarkable prosperity, 60 people per square mile of non-wilderness hex, 2,000 people per six-mile hex. All right, so... <laughs> Is nothing there? Ouch, man, ouch. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, I don't know. Okay. So we, we, I guess we can try to figure out some population densities. Uh, so the, the, the domes are going to be heavily skewed because it is a very high population area per square mile. If we wanted to, let me see what's ahead. I, I guess I'm, my, on the one hand, I think that we should probably do the inside the dome. <clears throat> excuse me, nations first, in which case those numbers aren't going to apply. We could probably pick something more like modern city density. Or else, oh, I guess actually they have urbanization here, <clears throat> though it may be more fantasy-based. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Let me get a drink of water, swig of water for the working man here, see if I can clear my voice up. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so their their <clears throat> boy their guidelines for population are based on, I guess, a, a post-apocalyptic fantasy kind of thing, which is fine. Those numbers, those fantasy whatever numbers, are going to work fine for the outsider populations. They will not work well for the inside the domes population because it's been more. Even though the cultures inside are not particularly sci-fi i want to i believe that the, uh, the their living cores of residence everything are set with set probably with more modern densities and they're not super populated i don't think we're looking at something like uh i don't know the largest cities in the world in terms of population um but much greater densities than i think we're used to in fantasy realms that's in there so i'm gonna skip i just want to get a peek at what's coming up next city placement we got cities we're marking we got kind of we got i think we pretty much have sort of wastelands marked out okay so now we're getting some tables here we go so i'm gonna put the population stuff aside we can kind of come back to it a bit i'll probably have to pull up some more modern numbers, maybe look at what, say, New York or London had in maybe the 19th century for New York, maybe the 20th century for London. I don't know. Someone will have to figure out some kind of city-style numbers for the domes. The one thing is that we can do, so on page 125, and there isn't, unfortunately, sorry, it was a little disjointed in the stream. Or elsewhere. I don't have a great way. I'm still using Restream. I'm not using OBS. I don't have a great way to show two windows at once. And there's not an easy way. Unfortunately, I wish they would give me an easy way just to swap between two screen shares. Looks this screen, that screen. Uh, but I don't. So there's some tables that give us some rolling roles for disputes with neighboring states. So if we look at our map, the 
outside the dome, or really all of them. So inside the domes, the dome cultures, the two dome cultures are rubbing right up against each other. I don't need to roll on this for disputes because we already know what their disputes are. They have essentially es- uh, es- existential conflict within one another. So that one, that's fine. Don't need to do that. For these outsider ones, it is more interesting in terms of what we're, what they, what we are uh, coming up with in terms of disputes. And depending on where we want to set the game, we can either have uh, disputes between the three outsiders, imagining, which I think makes sense that they're in these. So the two on the southern end, east and west, have a trade route between them that was established through the dice. So we know that they have contact with another. I would likewise imagine that we did not build it in that on the eastern side, the northern and southern nations, likewise, there's some road. They're they're certainly connected by the river, and presuming that the river isn't horribly rough, there probably is commerce or at least contact between them. And there's a mix. They're in a mix of hills and grasslands, which probably means there's nice flat ground. There's really not much reason that these wouldn't, that they would not know each other existed. There's nothing here that would, we would presume, would be a hard barrier to the fact that nobody ever went down river or up river, and nobody ever just walked beside the river and it got to them. So we know that we could probably say that there are linkages between the southern, east, and west linkages between the east, northeast, and or uh, northeast and southeast. And then we could say that because of that, whether they, they deal directly or not, we could say that the northeast and southwest nations at least have knowledge of each other. After that, we can determine what they know of the domes, if if anything. It's been 20 years. The domes been they've been trying to contact people, but potentially they maybe haven't found anybody yet. But depending on where we want to set sort of our year zero of our campaigning, have the domes made contact with anyone? Or are they still looking around the wilderness? The domes, unlike these other ones, there's no trade route that runs directly by the domes. It is full of wasteland and hills and, and these poor grasslands. There's not really any reason, especially given how tough the natural habitat seems to be around here. If this trade route is relatively safe, relatively, right? Relatively compared to the rest of things. I I can't see much reason other than hardened explorers. And even then would want to delve up into the wastelands. And if they get in that, those wasteland areas, they could easily give up, decide to turn back or be killed before they ever come to the domes. And then even if they get to the domes, and they see it and they go, oh my gosh, there are some kind of domes here. Oh, we got to tell the world. And then they could easily just get killed, whatever, on the way back out. <clears throat> so I, I, I'm happy to, I think, to say at this point, maybe our year zero, or actually we have, we gave a year date, but year zero of our campaign, right? How, how things are at the beginning, the three outsider nations will roll some dice and see how they relate. We've got two nations inside the domes. We already know how they get along with each other. They don't. So we don't need to roll dice for that. But for the other three, these out three outsider ones, we can certainly uh, determine kind of who, who they're on about. Now, one thing I want to do is I'm just going to give these, I don't have names for them, but I want to just give them just some letters for now. And I can fill these in. All right, so that's actually that doesn't kind of look. Ah, never mind. I'll just go northeast. I'll do northeast, southeast, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here, make some free areas. Let's see what I can. Oh, I don't think I want that. Now, where can I put something new? I want a frame. Ape. Uh. No, Kanban, tables, emojis. No, I don't want emojis. What do I want? I'll just have to make some text. All right. Let's roll some dice. 
So as far as I'm going to roll two sets here for, we'll start with Southwestern Nation. Oh, I mean, you know what? This is where it gets, this is where I got too much stuff going on. Okay, so. Just. Oh, here we go. Brainstorming, research and design, mapping and diagramming. Customer touch point. Oh, you know what? This is where I could actually use another mind map. Oh, here we go. Stuff's down here, maybe? Nope, not that stuff. Here we go. Okay, we're going to call this South Western Outsider Nation. Northeastern Outsider Nation. Southeastern Outsider Nation. Okay, we got three. I should probably give these different colors. I don't think that really helps. Okay. I can actually kind of adjust these in a sense to mimic, mimic how they look on the map. <clears throat> Maybe not make a difference. Uh, and I should probably have the, and I'll put the dome nations in here at some point. So this is kind of our, we're looking at our political connections, right? And so they're going to have, Oh, wait, 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 where is it? I forgot how to drag those points off of. I might just have to. Okay. So, all right, I'll have to see how to do this. Do that for right now. All right, let's roll some dice. Let's roll some dice. So looking at between southwest and northeast, before I lose my nerve, I need to roll some, I need to roll uh, a D, D20, two D20s, one positive, one negative. That's what I'm going to do. Rolled an 11 and a 9, which gives us on the disputes, they lured away an academy or great temple. All right, so let's go put this into. All right, so that's something food for thought, and now we'll put a another one here, and it was a nine, 11 and a nine. <laughs> that's kind of funny. So on the dispute, they lured away an academy or temple, and then in the positive ties, sages and scholars came from there. Well, gee, do they come from there because they lured away the temple? You know, we could think about that. So... Uh, th that's just kind of funny. It just sort of, sort of fits together. Funny how that happens. Let's see, positive supplies, 
scholars and sages. Now maybe I'll, yeah, I feel like positive, but this might turn into a super mess. Oh, you know what? Hold on a minute. I think I got to do this. Come on. to make this more organized. Ah. There we go. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just trying to line there. I'm trying to uh, make this a little bit more organized. So we got disputes. So each one of these will have disputes and positives. Um, there's probably another word for positives, but oops. Okay. So on the positive side, as far as the southwestern nations nation goes, it's got one dispute so far with the northeastern. That is, they lured away an academy or great temple. And that kind of makes sense if we look at the positive side. The northeastern, uh, it, it's a smaller nation. If we look up at our map. Nor e the northeastern nation is small, but we're getting a little feel for it now up here. Maybe there's some kind of center of learning or culture or religion or more of the above that puts them in a special spot. And there was some potentially a temple or sect or something that then migrated from their original home here in the southwest. And given that this, we've established that this area is in turmoil, the Southwest, there is civil unrest. It kind of makes sense that maybe some of these folks got up and left and went back maybe home or to the, what they, what might be their cultural or uh, center or religious center. So we've got that. And now let's do the same thing from southwest to southeast. Going to roll two more dice. I'm using Dice Maiden in my Discord to roll, so don't blame me. It's all Dice Maiden's fault. Got an eight and an eight. On the negative side of the ledger, their culture is supplanting local beliefs. Okay. Foreign culture supplanting local beliefs. This is linked to southeastern. So there's some real crises, some real cultural crises going on for the southwestern outsider nation. <laughs> and yes, I will have to come up with better names. But they do for, oh my gosh, look at that, fits again. So the, the, the negative was, hey, culture, you got a culture war going on. The positive is they provide critical trade relations. And look at that. Does it not make sense that they would since they are sitting on one end of this trade route? Especially if we presume that the, there's Congress between the, the two Eastern nations, potentially with from the Northeast having to come down to that North or Southeast nation to then move across it completely makes sense that they they kind of control that entryway that the southwest is is somewhat on their own out there um what do they call that they call that provides critical trade relations provides critical trade relations Maybe I should say it receives from the southwestern. Wait a minute, am I reading that correctly? May okay, maybe I'm maybe I'm reading this wrong. Maybe I guess it's 
I think I made reason wrong. So it's supposed to be saying that the South, I think it's supposed to be that the Southwestern nation is actually supplying scholars and sages to the Northeast, which still makes sense in terms of the, the relationship. It's just now it's in reverse. So it potentially now we could look at it, and I guess I'm just reading that the wrong way. So it's actually the Southwestern Native Station that is the critical trade, which still makes sense because they are the gateway to the other side of the world, the map. Gateway to the West, they're like St. Louis. Joel Anderson says, clearly there are strange forces at work here. There seem to be. It's the power of seven. Potentially, someone or someone has uh, someone has hacked Dice Maiden to our benefit. All right, so we've got uh, Southwestern Outsider Nation. So just to reset and correct my earlier mistake, Southwest the Southwestern Outsider Nation on the positive side supplies scholars and sages to the Northeastern Outsider Nation, and also supplies critical trade to the or South. To the south, to the northeastern, and to the southeastern is part of this critical trade, critical trade run, which makes total sense, right? Because the trade route that we establish runs in the south from you know east west. So those things both totally make sense. Now, as far as issues that they have, the northeastern outsider nation lure away an academy of the great temple, which again makes sense because they're supplying sages and scholars, but for whatever reason we haven't dis- established yet some major academy or great temple decided to shift over there. And it could be because, as we've established, there is uh, a lot of unrest in the southwestern outsider nation. And then as far as between the southwest and the southeast, southeastern culture is supplanting local beliefs. And it may be that even also could play into the disputes that are there. Potentially, some of this civil unrest is between southeastern cultural people, people who are either used to or still identify with that southeastern outsider culture and the what everyone call native southwestern culture. So stuff fits together, fitting together pretty well. All right, so let's look, take a look at what... So we're going to do the same thing essentially with the southeastern and northeastern. I'll do southeastern first. In this case with the... Southwestern. So I'm going to rolling 2d20 via Dice Maiden once again. Seven and a five. So seven on disputes. A past war savagery has left deep scars. So we have a past war to deal with. I gotta make... Okay, so we've got disputes. Actually, this is positives. Disputes. Oh, let me do that. Oh, come on. Let's delete that. I'm going to add here. Past. Past war. Savagery. Left scars. That's peeled back to them. Now on the positive, what did I roll? I rolled a I think it was a seven and a five. Am I remembering my numbers? Yep, seven and a five. So that was the seven. The five is they helped to overcome an eldritch peril. Woo! All right, we have a eldritch peril they helped overcome. Helped overcome Eldritch Errol. I really like the way these these do. You do seem to find these things that fit together in terms of we've got civil unrest here. Maybe this was because of this war that there was this peril. It was defeated, but it left these deep divisions in this in the southwestern nation and because people from the southeast had come over to help there you get that kind of culture war happening and you also end up with potentially why they're not getting together hey tunkatad tunkatad says 
Are you going to use a list of governments found in the first edition DMG to help flush out the areas? Um, I might. I might. I'm gonna. See, so the uh, the kind of the goal of this was to see kind of what we got just doing all the worlds without number stuff. But I'm certainly happy to supplement it or add different things in. Uh, and I certainly have the first edition DMG, so I'm not opposed to using it. We'll see how far we get with what Worlds Without Number gives us, and then we can uh, supplement it with more stuff. I do think Worlds Without Number has some government um, generation things. I'll check it out, but I'll pull out my, probably between this stream <clears throat> and the next one, I will pull up my 1E, or maybe when we get closer to there, remind me, and I'll pull out my 1E DMG and have it handy. That way we can compare them and see if we get if what we get is unsatisfactory from Worlds Without Number, we can uh, flesh it out, add more to it, swap, whatever, with the with the DMG. All right, so that was southeast to southwest. So now let's do southeast to northeast. Hitting up Dice Maiden again. Rolling 2d20. 10 and a 5. So we got 5 again. That might be a nice, actually, might make another nice linkage. All right, so we know that All right, so we got a oh, whoops. Got positives. Didn't actually mean to set this one up yet, but I guess I'll just do it since I'm here. Hello. So positives, they also helped overcome apparel, which is interesting because we can really link these two together. So maybe this, whatever this peril was that they did is something that all three of these kingdoms helped out with. <clears throat> so we really have this just just because of the dice. We just happen to have this one uh, positive that links all three together in a way. Maybe there was some, whatever the Eldritch Peril was, it was something that it, for a short time united these three kingdoms. Some kind of call went out originally from Southwest, went here, maybe they called here, and they all got together and had a little, you can almost, it would be neat to think of it as some kind of crusade even. You know, beep, 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 and they all kind of went down to, to, to clear this out but we're still in sort of the throes of that event. And certainly it's interesting if we, if we, we think of this Northeastern kingdom, maybe it's some kind of religious center for the, this, the, the realm, this realm uh, in general, that they might've had the authority to do that. Maybe that's why that supply of scholars, right? we've got the supply of scholars that's happening. Maybe that has to do with that authority that they have, and also why they're luring away religious folks. Now, on the disputed side, what did I roll? I rolled a 10, which is a new one. They broke off an alliance or important pact. Oh. Really starting to feel like we're in the, that there really is a sense of some kind of uh, some kind of past their trauma from a past very important event broke off an important alliance pact. All right, well, this is messy, but hopefully we can see kind of what's going on. All right. Messy, but uh, interesting. It's got some food, food for thought in here. So, all right, now I'm going to do Northeastern. I'll do Northeastern to Southwestern first with a 2d20. 18 and a 4. So 18 on the dispute. 
a spy ring suspected or has been found. I got some intrigue. Intrigue. Okay, Todd says, maybe trust was lost due to a political rumor that an agent of the elder is in a place of power in that kingdom. Yeah, could be. Could be. I mean, I'm definitely getting the sense that there was some huge conflict, something eldritch, supernatural, magical that happened. And that kind of like a, a world war type situation. We think in our own, our own world. And we think about, you know, in many ways, people look at it and say, hey, we are still living in the ripples, through the ripples of, the forget the Second World War, just the First World War. I mean, the Second World War is probably the biggest ripple of the First World War, but we're still living in those ripples in the same way. Perhaps these three kingdoms, especially that Southwestern Kingdom, are really in the ripples of whatever it was that was ripping through it. We definitely know that there was some kind of past war. Was that that was that the conflict that helped overthrow the Eldritch, whatever it was? Did that war lead to the Eldritch, whatever? Was it a situation in which there was conflict between the two nations? If it was an Eldritch power in terms of an intelligent one that made war, how did that work? All right, we, but you can definitely it feels like these dice, whether they you know obviously it's all random, but you can kind of construct them into creating. Uh, a fairly interesting geopolitical situation in terms of all the things that are happening. So we got the spy ring. And then on the positive side of the ledger, I rolled a four, which gives us a widely admired culture. So they admire the culture. Cultural admiration. Wildly admire. I can move this. I know there's probably no way to make it super <laughs> legible. More like that. Does that maybe? I should probably color code these in some way. Sounds like the Shadow War in Babylon 5, sort of, Tonka Todd says. Yeah, it, it, it really is. All right. And, and, and and what certainly depending on which stage of that war you're looking at, I've been rewatching some of the Babylon Five stuff, so it's been interesting to kind of just just from a personal standpoint, all the stuff that was going on. But yeah, there was constantly these sorts of ebbs and flows in the relationships between these different uh, empires and 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 star-faring nations, and yeah, and even after the war was over having to deal with what had happened between all these things during that war, right? And, and what what uh, self-interests might have been temporarily, uh, you know, overcome by the war effort now are, are springing forth again, our old wounds that are opened up or just weaknesses because of these various, various events of the war. Uh, okay, so that was 18 and four. So, okay, so I did that one. Now I got to roll one more set. Or south, northeast to southeast. 13 and an 8. 13 and an 8. I got 8 once before. So 13 is a new one. They drove a terrible beast into this land. That's a, that's a good one. And that's certainly possible. Dispute. Mm -hmm. 
And then on the positive side of the ledger, this one came up before too. I don't, I'm not sure where. I think, I think I've rolled an eight before. Critical trade relations, which also, again, makes complete sense given the layout. All right, so we got this hole. I apologize for this. This swirl looks like a spaghetti, really spread out spaghetti map. Spaghetti madness. Well, let me try to. Okay, let's let me try to bottom line these in a general way. So we have established the northeastern outsider nation has uh, a dispute with the southeasterns easterners who they say drove a terrible beast here and they also suspect the southwestern nations of aspiring either suspect or have found aspiring there on the positive note the southeasterners do provide critical trade relations to the northeast and in terms of the southwest they they do very much admire that culture and we can think about why that might be the southeasterners are angry that the northeasterners broke off an important alliance or pact i think it's i guess maybe we can you know one of the things i noticed as i'm going through here is it's i find it somewhat unclear as to whose point of view we're looking at with these so for example positive ties with a neighboring state they use the term they they greatly admire elements of this culture. Is that to say that the state I'm rolling for greatly admires elements of the other culture, or does the neighboring state greatly admire elements of this state's culture? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm just going to have to just interpret them. Some of them are more clear. Some of them are less clear because they're using a lot of they's, but they're not saying you know, who the they's. So, for example, in the disputes, they're suspected of backing assassinations makes sense, right? We the they in that case is clearly the neighboring state. But in um or their rulers. I get well, now that I'm thinking about it, okay. If we say that in the disputes table, all the they's are referring to the neighboring states, can we presume that means that the they's in this, in the positive sides, they're also referring to the neighboring states. So maybe that's how it's supposed to be read. So maybe the they greatly admire elements of this culture means that the neighboring states greatly admire this culture. Maybe that makes more sense. I, maybe I'll go with that. I might have to go and look at these again in terms of the chart. But getting back to our table, just as we're going through, probably could be made a little bit more clear, but I'm guessing as I'm analyzing, maybe that's how they mean. So the southwestern nation greatly admires the northeastern nation's culture which makes sense with sort of what we've seen as far as the southeasterners uh, the positive side is there was some kind of eldritch peril that both the southwesterners and the north northeasterners helped overcome Again, looking, going back at that table, is that the they? Uh, let's see, where's the entry I used? They helped to overcome an Eldritch Peril. So the Eldritch Peril must have been in the southeast. So we'll have to amend. We'll have to amend our thinking on that a bit. Okay, so it looks like if I'm reading this correctly, it was... The the Eldritch Peril was in the southeast, and the southwest and the northeast came in. Yeah, we can make as Tunkin Todd says. I'm thinking you could do either. Yeah, we can uh, we can make this work. I'm just trying to get because I'm trying to look at at sort of how Worlds Without Number wants you to do it. I do think it's important to understand what they're trying to tell us. But yes, ultimately we can do whatever. There was an Eldritch Peril somewhere 
and they all got together to help. That's a positive. And then, and then we already went over the negatives. And then from the Southwestern outside nations perspective, the Northeasterners lured away an Academy of Great Temple. And they also believe that the Southeasterners, that their culture is supplanting local beliefs. But on the positive note, the Southeasterners do supply critical trade relations. And the Southwesterners, or the Northeasterners, supply sages and scholars. So we've got this interesting web. We've already, we can think about how these elements could get together to give us what we usually want in terms of, if we're thinking about this stuff as the backdrop or kind of what the world is giving the players. Or the, the ultimate idea of all this stuff is not to just have it to have it. It's not even just to have it as a backdrop. It's to have it as stuff that the party, the players can engage with and find angles to work and pick out adventures. And we have that. I think once... In terms, we haven't even touched what's going on in the domes yet, but in terms of outside the domes, coming back, back up to our, our big map here, I think there's really a great, um, you know, uh, we've got a lot of great uh, pieces here to work with. We've got hints of some kind of eldritch disaster. Maybe that eldritch disaster had to do with the beast that <laughs> that the northeast got managed to get out of their kingdom but sent it up to the northwest or the sorry the southeast managed to send uh northeast we've got uh, yeah they've we've got trade going on here but some kind of cultural conflict we've got a another cultural conflict of a different kind between the the northeast and the southwest there's some kind of relationship there but it's maybe a little bit tenuous a little bit strained but it's important so that's really good stuff just off of rolling some dice, rolling some dice and just and plunking them down. Oh, wait, and now we got so that was uh, we got some more tables here to roll. Same page. Uh, Tunka Todd says maybe the Southeast Nation was trying to overthrow the Eldritch with the help of the other two nations. What's uh, and it was left unclear if they rooted out all the other agents or influence. Yeah. Totally. CC. I mean, uh, we, you know, once we figure out what that influence is, it could just be a monster. It could be a cabal. It could be a cult. Could be whatever. Um, but yeah, we there's a lot of a lot of meat here. A lot of meat here. We're doing. So now I got to make some new entries for our things. So we got a couple more tables. One on problems and one on. One is uh, national problems, current national problems, and then the other thing is on kind of positive problems. Or not <laughs> positive problems, positive things happening. So let me go and amend our maps here. I'm going to change this to positive relations. We have positive events. National problems. All right, since I filled this in for Southeast, let's just do them first. It's another two 20-sided die rolls. Dice Maiden, don't steer me wrong. We got a 13 and an 8. So the first one on a current national problem, local aristocrats are pushing for independence. That would certainly be a problem. Certainly. Now, nothing says you could create a world history by rolling this one for every hundred years or so and stitching a story together. Absolutely. I think if I was going to do something like that, I might use, was it Kingdom or Microscope? But yeah, you could totally, totally do these. And uh, intentionally or not, I have a feeling that you could probably, especially if you're using like hundred, hundred year increments, you could easily find enough connective tissue kind of things or things that allow you to chain things together in a good way, or at least in a way that makes some kind of sense. All right, what was I? What was I doing? It was uh, oh, local aristocrats are pushing for independence. Local aristocrats pushing for independence. Okay, that's pushing for independence. 
And we could also roll multiples of these two. I'm just rolling one to get started, and depending on how things work out, maybe maybe we'll come back and we'll do more. We'll do more of these, add more to them. But I think one, we don't want to overwhelm ourselves, and some of these might go away, then other ones we can roll for new ones. Moderation is not a bad thing with the stuff because it can get overwhelming. So that was 13 on the negative table. And now eight on the positive table. We've got good harvests that are enriching the people. All right. Harvests have been good. That's south. East, let's motor on over to Southwest. Just gonna update that name. Positive events, I'm just adding some more headers for us. National problems. On another 2d20. Come on, bingo, 17 and 13, 17 on the negative side. Whoa, fearsome monsters are migrating into the land. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. Migrating. Here's some monsters are migrating here. Yep, that would be bad. And then what was the other number I rolled? Uh, 13. An old enemy has agreed to a peace pact. Well, look at that. Doesn't that kind of match up with the fact that they're, the other side was feeling old war scars? An old enemy has agreed to a peace pact. It all comes together. Okay, and then finally, from the north, east, relations, positive events, problems. All right, two d twenty dice maiden. What you got for me? Let's not. Let's we'll see if we can roll. Hopefully we'll roll some stuff we haven't seen before. Yeah, we did. 14 and 9. So 14 on the negative. An important mine has run out or been harmed. Mine has run out or been... Whoa. That's really zoomed out. I know it's trying to help me, but you're not helping me. I'll zoom back in. There we go. All right. And then on the positive side of the ledger, number nine says a wicked minister has been deposed. Could that be related to the spy ring? I don't know. I would say yes. And what I love about this mind map stuff, even though it's making a spaghetti mess, is that I can take that linkage and say, oh, yeah, oh, that's spiring. Yeah, it had to do with that minister. And we've just... Well, where did this... Did I get the right... Did I link into the right one? Oh, no, I may have linked to the wrong thing. Where did this go? Hold on a minute. Delete that. I hit the wrong one, so I want to get this over to the spy ring. Did that go? Yes, it did. Okay. So even though it's a mess. Tucker Todd says that maybe the spy ring is the last remaining influence of the elders that was fought. Yeah, it could be. Could be. This could be this could be the next flashpoint in everything that's going on is the spy ring. We had this elders thing going on. We've had an old war and now the spy ring. 
and even these two. So on the national problems, maybe the fact is that the terrible beast that was driven here is what harmed the mine. So we can just make that connection. Let me see if I see any other... Do we see any other ones that make sense? I'm going to say that this alliance pact that's broken is also related to that minister. How? We don't know yet. There's a relation. And we know that uh, on the positive side here, this the old enemy agreed to a peace pact. I'm definitely going to relate that over to past war savagery. Oh my gosh, this is looking messy. Okay, so it's super messy, right? But we're seeing just, you know, what I like about this, again, uh, is that we're seeing all these linkages and all those linkages are all these sources of tension and ideas and plot hooks and things that parties could sink their teeth in. We've got a wicked minister was just opposed. What might that mean? Spiring is suspected or it was found. Uh, there's a, there's certainly, if you look at, okay, there's a mine, an important mine that was just cut off. Potentially we're looking at it. That's certainly just right there is already a an adventure hook just waiting to happen, right? There was a beast. They presume they was driven here from the southeast, and that's made them angry. Whether that's true or not, it doesn't even have to be true, but it's certainly what they think is true. Now it's sitting in that mine and needs to be driven out. What could be done with that? Could the ministry be part uh, of or be rumored to be part of the spiring? Yeah, I, that's my, that was certainly my thought. It's connected somehow. Maybe the prime, that uh, wicked minister was the leader of the spiring. They were coordinating it. They were the spy master. Maybe something's going on here. This could be interesting, too, because there's this problem with the Southwest about monsters being driven here. Which is interesting because the northeastern nation is at least alleging that monsters that, that a monster was driven here from the southeast. Maybe also, I'm gonna, just going to link that to the southeast too. Maybe there's something with the southeast being this monster thing where monsters are being driven into the other lands from them. Uh, whether it's true or not, who knows? Whether it's purposeful or not, we don't know yet. But that seems to be a thing. It's a running theme that we're getting. Monsters being driven into two of the kingdoms out of one of the other ones. Maybe that's why I've had a good harvest because all the monsters have been kicked out. And the one thing we don't have any connections for, but that doesn't, it's not a bad thing necessarily. It's just interesting is we, the local aristocrats pushing for independence. Uh, you know, what could that, you know, what could that, uh, what could that be about? We don't know yet. We don't know if that connects. It doesn't have to relate to everything else. Not everything has to be part of the connective soup. Things could certainly be on their own. But it's interesting to think about, is that totally uh, on its own? Or is it have some kind of sneaky relation to these other things? All right, what have we got? Um, all right. I always like when these, I feel like we, it's there's a good cadence on some of these where we, I feel like we're wrapping up right around in an hour, which is good because it's almost about an hour. What kind of thoughts do you guys have? Any questions, any thoughts? I will reiterate. Oh, so before you guys start to bail out, if you bail out and don't wait for the very end, and why would you bail out before reading for the bitter end of the stream? Give it a thumbs up, if you please. If you're in here and you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Helps me out. Doesn't really hurt you. You just know when things are going. And hopefully if you've been watching or listening, you enjoy it. Um, I will repeat, and I'll post it again. I've now got a voicemail, and I'll start to add that link into the show notes and stuff, but you can leave me a voicema voicemail. You can go to hxpr.2, which is my URL shortener, right? Hexpress2, hxpr.2, forward slash voicemail. You can leave me a note. I think it has to be about a minute or so. I've heard... Other than that, give me a thought. I'd uh, certainly love to hear thoughts on the Logan's Run project, things you think we could do. No, nothing asks, how do you want us to use the voicemail thing? Really, any way you want to. I think, 
I keep saying I think because no one's tested it yet, so I don't have a good basis for, but I've heard it's about a minute, so you can't leave me a novels, an, an audio books, a length of verbiage, but really on anything. It's really the, the reason why I, I put it out there is I'm just trying to lower barriers to get communications going. Uh, I have a bunch of different areas, different or areas, there are a bunch of different ways you can reach me uh, through the YouTube channel, um, community tab, obviously comments in the streams, uh, Twitter, Facebook, you know, I'm all those different platforms. This is, I mean this to be another platform folks can get a hold of me. I don't know if folks are already, will find that an easier method than typing out. That. I don't think they have to make an account, but someone can get in there and try it. Maybe find it easier to leave me a, uh, a mail that way. It's all about just me trying to find ways to communicate that work for people. I've seen in, in folks that like Bandits Keep have been able to use the kind of voicemail feature on their podcast form for to good use. And so I thought, oh, let me try it. And my, I have a podcast platform. It's not anchor where this podcast is, where this voicemail is. I would have put it there if they had a voicemail feature, they don't. So I'm using anchor. So I'm just kind of hoping to see, will people use it? Leave me messages. If not, that's no big loss, but I thought I would set it up and see what happens. Joanna says, oh, so no dad jokes then. No, please send your dad jokes. Send your dad jokes. Send whatever you'd like. Because look, if I don't want to, I just won't use it. I mean, it's not an unfiltered, just goes straight to my publishing. So if, you know, if I don't like it, I won't use it. But no, feel free. Um, it's really about how you guys find it. What, what, what methods will help you guys communicate with me the easiest? If it turns out that it's, I think you can do it on your phone and everything. It turns out that leaving a quick shot shout out that way or comment, question, whatever works for you, then use it. If you prefer all the other methods, you know, as I keep overlaying over things, right? I'm on, uh, I'm on Twitter at Hex Pressman. You can do it that way. Uh, you know, I've got the YouTube channel that has the community tab. You can do it that way. Um, I don't find that. So from the YouTube community tab, it's very, it's been very helpful for me to sort of send out messages. I guess, let me, let me back up. So, and I'll just, I don't know if we need to zoom in. Give us a zoom in on me now. Let me back up a minute. Something I found. And I don't know if it's just me. I need to redo kind of my main website. Okay. So that's kind of under construction. It's, I need to redo it. It's on my list of things to do. What I have found, and it might just be just the way I've gone about things, is that I'm in a bunch of different places. And it's hard to figure out where people want to, if people are looking out to send me something, a message, where where, where to send it. I'm on, I'm on Reddit. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I am have the YouTube thing. All great places. And now I've got this voicemail. The voicemail is just me adding a different, different way of communicating because the problem with the social media avenues, those ways of communicating is you need to have, uh, I guess I don't have my glasses right now. You need to have <clears throat> some kind of login to that social media. I, I want to say with the voicemail, you don't necessarily, but someone once, hopefully people will use it. I'll get a better sense of how it's used. And this is also my ideas for if I can finally get around to putting together discord, same thing. I'd love to be able to have one place I can kind of funnel things to. Instead of, not that I'm going to close down those other avenues of accessing me, but find that one where I can post stuff and know that most people are going to get it. That I, you know, that I get, uh, here's where can my community kind of is. So I'm, I'm still kind of reaching out for that. The voicemail is another idea of wondering if, hey, if folks are trying to get a hold of me or want to ask me something, is this going to be, is this going to be an easier way with maybe less barriers or less onerous barriers since people might say, oh, I'm off of Facebook. I don't want to go to Facebook. I don't blame you uh, for that. Or ah, I hate Twitter. I don't want to be on Twitter. I don't blame you for that. If, if you are on YouTube and you're watching me on YouTube, which most people are, then the, the community tab is a great way to do it. But I don't find that many people use it. I will post stuff and most times it just goes without note. Not to say that people don't see it, but I don't get a lot of comments, messages, questions, or anything through there. I get stuff 
in some of the videos, which I try to respond to comments wise, but I don't know if, but it, again, those people, I think people are going to leave comments as they should that kind of pertain to the video. So it's not so much a, Hey, generally where to get a hold of me. Uh, so I'm hoping this voicemail thing will work, but ultimately I hope that I can kind of at least hook all this stuff together in discord in some way to figure out that hopefully discord can maybe be in the future, that place where at least, and I know some people don't want to be on discord or they're on too many discords. And I get all that. But if I can get 70 or 80% of the community or maybe even just 50% and, and, and know that they kind of are on there and I can blast stuff out there, <clears throat> that doesn't mean I won't post it other places, but I know I can get to everybody. That'd be good. And also, I think on Discord, you can also do stuff like send voice messages if people want to do it that way. It's all a work in progress. I'm just trying to get a feel for how people would like to communicate. Linkian says, I'm active in at least two different discords. It looks like another one listening to YouTube script doesn't seem active for you. Yes, I got I to gotta fix that. Yes, I, uh, I, I'm i active on a couple of different discords. You can find me. I'm actually on a bunch of discords, and most of them I'm not active on. But the important thing about the discords in terms of now is that you can find me if you see me and just send me a private DM me with a private message. Um, I do need to change because, yeah, I used to be or my thought I, at one point a long time ago, I was active on there. I'm not anymore. I just really haven't updated that part. That is true. But if you send me a message, or even if you send it to me on that server that you're referring to, it'll ping me and I'll get it. Um, so that's definitely, if you're already on Discord and you're already on a Discord server that I'm on as well, that's also a way to get a hold of me. Uh, the thing is with being on other people's Discord servers, right, is you're always, obviously you're always subject to their whims, rules, desires, and it's great when people are like, oh, yeah, you can share your stuff here, but you never know at some point they're going to go, you know what? We don't want you sharing stuff here anymore. Or uh, frankly, sometimes you, you know, something will come out and you go, oh, gosh, I thought these guys were cool or gals, whomever. And like, I realized they're profoundly uncool. So I need to bail. So having my own Discord server would just mean that, hey, I'm the captain of my destiny on that server, right? No one's going to kick me out. No one's going to change the rules. No one's going to alter the deal any further. Uh, I'm going to go. Uh, so that's kind of part of that. And and it's kind of similar with YouTube and stuff in general, right? So far, I, look, I, my content, I don't think it's controversial at all. I don't even tend to use a language. It's pretty much a, a fairly G-rated chat. But you never know when they're going to get a, a B in their bonnet and decide, hey, you know what, pal, we've had enough of you, and boot you off. And then if all your community stuff is on YouTube, then you just you've lost it all. And, if it, and sometimes they make mistakes and sometimes you can get all back and sometimes it becomes really hairy. So wanting to make sure I've got other avenues for folks is important also, right? There's a issue of uh, creators, you know, you put your eggs all in one basket and what happens when that basket breaks? Uh, it's gone. Uh, but it's all a work in progress. So if the YouTube thing appeals to you, or not if the YouTube, if the voicemail thing appeals to you, give it a try. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And let me know. Let me know in... All these places I've mentioned, um, what you'd like to see or how you'd like to communicate with me or just any comments, reach out, reach out. Let me know what's up. But uh, I think we're done for the day. Thanks, everybody who hung out. If you could, like I said, thumbs up on your way out. And if you're in here and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Other than that, I'm not sure what's the rest of the week will hold. I have Cairn that I need to go over. Uh, my game keeps getting pushed back, so I'm not sure when my game is this week, so I'm not sure about prep and recap chats. If, unless something goes awry, Friday will be back. Friday will be reserved for the OSR roundups. And I do like to break things up, so I probably won't do a straight week just of Logan's Run Project. I, I want to give myself a little bit of a break. Let, my, let, let us see some other things, then come back to it. I think taking those kind of breaks helps get everybody's imagination going. But we're only on episode seven, and I think we're making good progress. I'm really excited to see where everything goes. Have a great rest of your day, night, whenever you're walking and watching or later listening to this folks. Talk to you later. Peace out.